Welcome back TCS viewers. As you can see by the hastily erected Western motifs, guys in cowboy shirts hitting on every girl they can see and the pulsing beats, it is yet again Calgary Stampede season. And of course, we're gonna look at a brand new camera, the Panasonic GX8. Now Panasonic's been coming out with a lot of cameras recently, but this is unique because the GX8 is really aimed at their high-end photographic market. This is their most prestigious camera. I'm gonna take it down to the grounds. I'm gonna try it out. The big thing that I wanna play with today, a brand new sensor. Let's go see it. Now, if you notice here, we've got some black tape on the front. We've gotta hide the identity of this camera because of course we got these before the embargo date. But you know, if you're familiar with the GX7 and the look and design of that camera, this is somewhat reminiscent. Notably, of course, the Flip EVF. Now, I kind of poo-pooed that last time, but I'm gonna give it a good honest try this time. However, you will notice as well that it is substantially larger than the GX7. I mean, it's a very comfortable camera. It's a really nice grip, but it is a bigger design. Now, that would normally go against what I consider the advantage of Micro Four Thirds. Smaller sensors, smaller lenses, smaller cameras, but this is aimed at their pro market. It is weather sealed and it certainly has a rough, rugged feeling body. So, you know, I think people are, uh, are looking for a more serious camera, more serious feel. Maybe that's what mirrorless needs to really kill the SLR. This camera is a good way to do it. Now, yes, it is a larger body, but that does give us a lot more real estate for custom function buttons. And we've got tons on this camera. One right here beside the grip under your finger. On top, we've got two right next to each other, one surrounded by one of the dials. And then on the back, you've got two function buttons as well, plus quick menu. And of course, that doesn't count the touchscreen customizability as well. So this camera is really designed for someone to set up a camera the way they want to use it. Now this bigger body is also weather sealed, yes, it's true, and uh, unlike what a lot of companies say, you can do a fully articulating screen and still keep the camera weather sealed. This is actually very unique to find on mirrorless cameras. You don't have them all the time. You know, often it's just these vertical adjusters, so this works great. The screen's nice and thin, it's very large and high res, and it updates instantly, so really, really high-end technology on the GX8. Now here's the biggest change. It seems like 16 megapixels has been synonymous with Micro Four Thirds cameras for quite a few years now. And this has a brand new 20 megapixel sensor. Now that is a nice change. These cameras are lagging behind when it comes to resolution. So this is a good way to keep up. And remember companies like Sony and Canon can deliver good results out of one inch 20 megapixel sensors. So I'm gonna get down to the grounds. It's time, I'm gonna try this out, shoot some photos and have a look at the image quality, but I'm eager to see if this is really gonna be a big impact and a big change for these cameras. All right, so here we are at the Stampede grounds and there's two things that I really wanna test out tonight. Now one I have a pretty good idea of and that's the DFD autofocusing on this camera. The GX8 should focus incredibly fast. I don't think I'm gonna be disappointed. But the second thing I wanna get is images to test out this sensor. This is the new exciting thing about this camera. So let's go take some photos, see what we get. Now I should mention that this is a media sample. It is still pre-production. Now things like image quality and autofocus, they're final, ready to go, but there's gonna be some bugs and we don't have 100% of the specs on this camera. So really this is just my experience using this today. Now the autofocus so far has been fantastic. And if you guys have seen the GH4, the G7 videos, this DFD autofocus works amazing. It's simply the best that you're gonna find in the mirrorless world. It's always bang on right where you want it. It's super quick, no hesitation whatsoever. Now in video, I am still gonna manual focus. And you got the usual accoutrements. You've got peaking, you've got zoom in, punch in focusing. But you know, we find the autofocus in videos okay, but sometimes it's just a little bit buggy. But for stills, it just doesn't get better. Now one of the unique features on the GX7 was in-body image stabilization. Now, it didn't work with image stabilized lenses. It was one or the other, but it was a nice alternative if you had a lens from Olympus, for example, or Panasonic lens without it. 
Now the GX8 has in-body image stabilization, but it can work in conjunction with lenses that also have stabilizers. It gives you excellent stability. Now we did some test shots here. As you can see, tenth of a second is doable at an 85 mil focal length. So pretty impressive stuff. Uh, it's a really nice setup. The only disappointment we have is if you're gonna do movie, you can't use it. I don't get it, it seems strange. You're gonna have to use lenses with image stabilization in it or electronic stabilization, which of course is just cropping and processing. Now this articulating EVF, a lot of people say if you're looking downwards at a camera, like on an old twin lens reflex, people won't notice you. So I'm gonna walk through a busy section, take pictures of people looking down at this, and I don't know, maybe it'll make me sick. I don't know, it's gonna be pretty awkward. We'll see how many people notice me. A little tricky if you're gonna do a vertical shot, hey? Let's give it a try. Is that inconspicuous? I don't think so. You know, I said it last time, this rotating EVF, I mean, it's a nice feature, okay. I mean, it's, it's better than nothing, but I still don't think it's the be all end all, honestly. I mean, only for low to the ground shots, things like that. It doesn't make you any less conspicuous when you're walking around. In fact, if anything, it makes it harder to avoid running into people. Um, for macro shots and things like that, where you want to be protected from sunlight, I could see it. But, you know, street shooting, this whole idea of not making eye contact and somehow that make you less conspicuous, I don't buy it. All right, so just a few impressions now that we're taking a bit of a break here. I do like this button right under the grip here. We've customized this to do sort of a, a preview per se. Uh, it's kind of in the place where you would normally expect to find depth of field preview on an SLR, but this is nice because you can turn the aperture effect on for depth of field. You can also then cycle through to do your shutter speed effect and see what kind of motion blur you're getting and just preview your overall exposure. It's nice that you can cycle through. We've been using it quite a bit tonight, it works well. Uh, the handling, the grip is still very comfortable. I'm not finding that I'm, you know, finding it hurting my wrist or that it's uh, top heavy or front heavy or anything like that. It's balanced really nice, but overall, it is still a chunky piece of camera. I do feel like I'm walking around with a fairly substantial brick in my hand. All right, now something that's very impressive with the GX8 is the buffer on this camera. It's huge and the processor can handle it. With the weather ceiling, they're very clearly aiming this camera, the GX8, at journalists, wildlife photographers, you know, trying to get these mirrorless cameras more into the professional market, more mainstream kind of shooting. Now, in RAW, 20 megapixels, we're getting 32 shots in a row. And this camera, although we don't have the exact specs, I would guess goes just over eight frames per second. Now, if you go to JPEG, it says officially 75 with the fast card in here, but of course, it's gonna be pulling to the card as well. You're gonna get more than that. I mean, basically, this thing will shoot JPEGs for as long as you want them to go for. So very, very impressive speed. This camera can certainly handle high-end photography. Hey guys, it's Jordan, the video guy. We're gonna try something new this year. Chris is actually gonna try and get me in focus. So uh, the video functions on the GX8, they're actually really nice. We're getting a lot of the benefits of the GH4, uh, the new G7. We've got that beautiful 4K recording here. We get the custom profiles like Cine D, Cine V, and we also get a full flip screen, which is great for video shooters. This viewfinder as well is absolutely gorgeous. It's an absolute treat to shoot video with. Now it does definitely feel like there were some compromises made with this one. For starters, they chose to use a two and a half mil mic jack. It's a real pain. Uh, you can't, you'll have to adapt pretty much every mic you want to use on there. And there is still the crop factor with this camera. So, you know, when you go from 1080p to 4K, you can see here there's a pretty substantial punch in when you do that. We're also missing some of the slow-mo recording options from the GH4. And I know they're trying to make this more a photography camera than the videographer's model, which is the GH4. But some of these just feel like artificial handicaps, especially with this bigger body. Battery life as well, it's the C12 battery, it's not great. All right, now the 20 megapixel sensor, that's what everybody's wondering about. So, you know, let's talk about that next. The extra four megapixels is a nice bonus. We still have a low pass filter here. It is a little bit sharper and certainly you've got that extra room to crop. Now with low light performance, what we noticed on this sensor didn't really blow us away. I mean, keep this in mind, we've got more megapixels and when you look at it, you're roughly getting the same kind of look in low light performance. So considering the extra resolution, that is an improvement. It's not huge, but on a pixel per pixel level, it does a better job. Dynamic range we can't really test because we can't process the RAWs yet, but you know, let's keep this in mind. This is gonna be the best micro four-thirds sensor for image quality on the market today. 
it's not growing leaps and bounds, but this is a nice step in the right direction. All right, so up to this point, I would have given the title of the best Micro Four Thirds camera for stills, probably to the Olympus OM-D EM1 because of the built-in stabilizer, the rugged body, the fast continuous autofocus. But now I'm gonna have to give that title to the GX8. Big part of it's the brand new sensor. It is the best image quality in the Micro Four Thirds world now. But you're also getting a very slick, well-designed body heavy but it's balanced and it's got great controls i love the viewfinder it's not the highest res on the market but whatever they did it's got no lag it's magnified well and the eye relief is great fantastic lcd screen as well weather sealed body and on top of that way better autofocusing this camera is the fastest focusing camera that i've used probably bar none other than g7 and gh4 using the same system on top of that, the buffer life has been improved. I mean, this camera is really delivering a complete package. When it comes to stills, it's incredibly capable. Now throw on top of that things like the 4K photo mode. We played with that before with the G7. It was nice to use. The inbuilt body stabilization. I mean, there's a lot of good stuff here. The video quality as well is excellent, although you're not gonna get the same capabilities as the GH4. You know, but the only downsides I can think about on the GX8 are gonna be the fairly high cost and the fact that you know, really, Panasonic has other cameras that are also very capable. I mean, keep in mind, if you want fast autofocusing and still very decent image quality, the brand new G7 gives you a lot of bang for the buck. But if you want the best of the best that Panasonic has to offer, it is the GX8. This is coming out soon. You guys are going to enjoy it. Remember, check us out on Instagram, follow us, subscribe, do all that kind of stuff because we love the attention and we're going to see you guys soon. Take care. Way. And let me put that into context. Certainly the four extra megapixels is helpful as always. You. Very well, it's comfortable after a long amount of use. You've got a lot of customizability and a lot of... Ah, yeah. <laughs>